The 1998 Godzilla movie despite being regarded as one of the absolute worst monster movies ever made, has a very special place in my heart. I still remember watching it for the very first time when I was a little kid and literally getting blown away with the VFX and special effects. I mean back then, watching a giant oversized lizard running rampant through New York City and unleashing destruction left me totally speechless and spellbound. However, fast forward two decades after watching a ton of different Godzilla movies including some of the current MonsterVerse content, I can totally understand and relate to the hate this movie eventually received. Godzilla 1998 was primarily made in an effort to cash in on the success of the first two Jurassic Park movies which brought in a new era of CGI and VFX technology to Hollywood. This is actually pretty evident because the design of the kaiju in the movie looked much more like one of those T-Rex from Jurassic Park than the actual king of the monsters himself. In 60 years, by the time of the release of the 1998 Godzilla movie, Toho had already produced close to 30 Godzilla movies. During this time, the king of the monsters had to go through quite a few modifications. However, each movie somehow managed to retain the core aspects of the character. The 1998 movie on the other hand totally abandoned several aspects that fans believed were essential to the Big G's identity. I feel like the makers of this movie decided to call it Godzilla just to draw more eyes and attract more audiences from across the world. It was reported that Toho, the creators of the real Godzilla character were not happy and were in fact furious with the title of this movie. As a result they even mocked and insulted this kaiju in one of their movies called Final Wars where there is a scene featuring the actual Godzilla ripping apart and brutally killing off his Hollywood fish-eating version. Then in 2001, the creature made another appearance in this movie called Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah where there is a scene which totally rebuked the 1998 movie. In one of the final scenes in that movie, Godzilla sightings over the years are shown to authorities, with one person mentioning that Godzilla supposedly surfaced in New York City in 1998. He's then corrected and informed by another official that it was simply a monster that the Americans thought was Godzilla, though it really wasn't. The rights for the Godzilla franchise was eventually reclaimed by Toho in 2003 after which they rebranded this creature from the 1998 movie as Zilla in any appearances post-2004. I think, this was the perfect move by Toho because if you take the godlike elements from Godzilla's character, you would probably get a massive oversized iguana quite similar to Zilla. The director, Roland Emmerich actually was all set to go ahead with a sequel to this film which eventually had to be scrapped after the immense negativity and backlash received by his first movie. However, with the introduction of the MonsterVerse in 2014 as well as the general growth of popularity of monster movies, it seems like people are beginning to treat the 1998 Godzilla movie with a lot more love and affection than they did two decades ago. I actually rewatched the movie just about a week ago and as weird as it sounds, I actually had a lot more fun watching it than most of the recent big blockbuster overrated stuff thrown out these days. Is it a great Godzilla movie? Absolutely not. In fact, the movie is immensely disrespectful to the actual Godzilla franchise. But is it a good monster movie? Well, I would say from a purely technical filmmaking standpoint, the movie is just average at the very best. But there is also no denying the fact that despite not featuring the actual king of the monsters, this infamous movie was the introduction to the real Godzilla for a lot of people including myself. Which is why I believe Zilla is always going to have a special place reserved for him in pop culture. In fact, the hate and backlash which the 1998 Godzilla movie continues to receive even to this day, several years later has somehow helped Zilla to become even more popular. As they say, a negative publicity is still a publicity after all. Which is why, I believe introducing him to the MonsterVerse is going to be an absolutely perfect idea. The MonsterVerse is currently one of the hottest properties in pop culture with their most recent release, Godzilla X Kong The New Empire earning over $550 million at the worldwide box office. However, the biggest problem the franchise faces is the fact that it is way too reliant on just their two poster boys, Godzilla and Kong. The franchise has had five big theatrical releases, one live-action miniseries, a Netflix-exclusive animated show and a graphic novel. And each of these eight projects have somehow featured either the Big G or Kong as the main protagonist. That is because the franchise is still not quite confident and they believe that making a project focused on some other kaiju would not be quite a commercially feasible option at the moment. But if Legendary Studios really wants the franchise to grow into a major cinematic universe, it will have to eventually step out of its comfort zone and diversify itself by bringing in some fresh new kaijus into the spotlight. 
Because to be quite honest, if they keep focusing on the big G and Kong, at some point, people are definitely going to get tired and bored. I believe this is where Zilla from the 1998 Godzilla movie comes into the picture. As I said, he already has quite a decent established fanbase which is why I believe a standalone movie based on his character could actually work with the right kind of marketing. Legendary Studios can have Zilla as an evolved subspecies of Godzilla himself. He could be like a Velociraptor to Godzilla's T-Rex or like Robin to Godzilla's Batman. A pack hunter, smaller and athletic, but still able to pose a legitimate threat. As a matter of fact, I actually have a pretty interesting idea to introduce Zilla into the MonsterVerse. A large section of people actually believe that this adorable gentleman known as Titanus Doug could evolve into Zilla over the course of the next few movies. As ridiculous as this sounds, if you think about it, Doug evolving into the MonsterVerse version of Zilla actually makes perfect sense. And by evolved, I do not necessarily mean to say that he would grow physically in size over the course of the next few movies and turn into Zilla. He could very well be exposed to some highly intense nuclear radiations which could lead to mutations inside his body eventually turning him into Zilla. Since the Hollow Earth is the most radioactive location in the entire universe, this theory actually makes perfect sense. Another way to logically turn Doug into Zilla would be by turning him into some kind of a subject of some evil experimentation at the hands of Apex Cybernetics who could genetically modify his DNA or something along those lines. I think both of these two theories makes a lot of sense and would serve as a really cool way to introduce Zilla into the MonsterVerse thereby allowing the character to have some sort of a redemption after the disastrous 1998 movie. So, that is all I had to share in this video. What do you think about Zilla entering the MonsterVerse? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And please do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because that is the only motivation for me to work harder and to bring you more and more such awesome contents. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.